Hi there, today we're talking about the purpose of a literature review. So a literature review is a comprehensive study and interpretation of the literature that relates to a particular topic. Now I've quoted Aveyard there from 2014 on page two. So see, I've given relevance to that article. When I talk about comprehensive, we mean detailed. Your perspective, how does this relate to the topic that you've selected for your literature review. So we have to look at what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how we're doing it. We're looking for a theoretical perspective or a foundation on some concept or topic that's of real great interest to you. We might be creating new knowledge. We might be assimilating knowledge together that hasn't been done before. So the purpose is that we can look at what's being done around a topic and what gaps are there that already exist. So start thinking about your literature review and how this video might relate and help you in your studies. So we've got two types of literature reviews. We've got a systematic review, which is a detailed um, review that follows conventions. And then we've got a traditional literature review. A traditional literature review could be written as an introduction, body and conclusion, but it could also have some parameters around it so that you explicitly state your methodology. So here we go. We can see two definitive um, differences between a traditional and a systematic literature review. One of the key things about your systematic review is that that process will be replicable. So somebody else would be able to do that same study and get similar results to what you found. And it would not just be you doing the study, it would be a group of people. So you can see here, they're still getting more understanding around a topic, but it's the way that the uh, review is written and the structure that it that it takes. So you might want to spend a few minutes going through this. A systematic review will only be a systematic review if you're following certain conventions. Never call just a traditional literature review something that you might be doing just to get an idea of a topic or as an assignment. Don't call that a, a systematic review, just a traditional literature review. Okay. The literature review advantages and disadvantages. Just like everything, it's got advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is you're gathering the literature together to get some theoretical perspective around a topic. You're summarising what's, what's known on that topic over a period of time. So you'll stipulate your period of time that you're going to be studying. It might only be in the last 10 years, depending on the topic. Uh, it might be over the last 15, 20 years. If we were talking about CAD-CAM, we probably wouldn't make it over 30 years. But if we were talking about the conventions of a gold crown, we may. So it depends on our topic. The whole puzzle is more than just one piece of information. We're bringing in parts of a jigsaw to join together. And sometimes there'll be a gap in that jigsaw and it's that piece that we want to find or it's that piece that we might want to do some further study on it. The disadvantage is there has to be a pool of literature there for us to draw, join on. If we want to study something like um, employability of a dental technician around the world, there might be too much lecture, literature around on that topic. So we might draw literature from other other specialties or other health groups to make some decisions and then go forward with something around that. It's also sometimes hard to get your own belief in there on the literature review because you're gathering everybody else's viewpoint around a topic. So there's some more things to ponder. Where to start? Okay, so choose a topic. Now I really like the idea of doing a mind map. This is a simple mind map here or you could do an exploration mind map where you're bringing different topics from all over the place and assigning the author to the topic. Here we're look, looking at the topic of CAD, CAD CAM. So we might be looking at, are we looking at fixed or removable prosthetics? Are we looking at CAD and CAM together? If we're looking at the, the computer assisted machining, then are we looking at subtractive or additive? So these are parameters that we have to stipulate and make very clear 
in what we're searching in the literature. So our search terms become critical. Are we looking at technology? Is it the design aspects of the technology that's behind the design and manufacture? Is it artificial intelligence? So that would go back a little bit further than where we are now, maybe. Are we looking at the perspective of the dental technician, the patient and the dentist? So are we looking where CAD CAM fits in dentistry? So you can see already I've got a broad range of, of ideas here. I could assign authors to some of these things too, and then that would lead me out off into the tree. So we start with the trunk. We go up and we, we, we get some ideas. But then once we've got all those ideas, we then have to narrow our topic and come back down. So once again, some more things to think about. You might want to stop now and consider some things yourself about your topic. So you have to establish a strong research question. It needs to be doable. What am I going to do? What am I looking for? Some key words and synonyms that relate to this topic. So then we go about looking at the literature. Then you want to take a structured approach. So you've got your, your introduction, your methodology, results, discussion and analysis, and then conclusion. Remember, when you're reading your literature, make sure it relates to your topic. So read the abstract, then read the introduction, read the conclusion. Do I need to read the rest? Then read it all if you still need to read the rest. But when you're taking your notes, Make sure you're putting everything, all the detail, how it fits your topic. So searching for your literature. Now, if you're in Europe, you'll probably be able to use Aurea as a search engine. Google Scholar, all over. Science Direct, PubMed, ProQuest, Medline. These are some of the databases that will house a lot of journal articles that all relate to the topics that you'll be looking for. The reason we're searching in these databases is that we want to get peer-reviewed literature. So we want to get the literature from um, an ideal source, not from secondary sources, not from manufacturers. So they're, they're going to give us a different viewpoint. They may bring some bias because they're selling a product. So be very aware who funded the study and where is this study being conducted? Who's conducting it? So search the literature around your topic. In a systematic review, you'll have a very structured search, search strategy. You might have one in a traditional literature review as well, but it'll be a bit looser. It might have the year, the author, what type of study it was, qualitative, quantitative, and how it's significant to your study. In a systematic review, you'll have your keywords, and that'll be strictly the keywords. The database you used, what combinations of those keywords, and then you'll have some results. And that will be the number of articles that you've got, as well as what was said in those articles. So you can see it's a more structured approach for a systematic review.